But one of the things we want to bear in mind in our opening statement is that we are crafting images in the audience's mind um, by the choice of the words that we use. Very interesting series of studies were done on the choice of our language and the consequences in the minds of the listener. <clears throat> there was a study in which researchers filled a room full of people. They divided them into five groups, unbeknownst to each audience member that they had been assigned to a different group. But the groups were equated for age and for you know, visual acuity and all the things that we want to uh, make sure our random assignment is successful in achieving for us. And so the five groups sitting in the same room all watch the same video. And the video shows two vehicles doing this, coming together. At the end of the video, the jurors are asked to turn over, or the audience members are asked to turn over the piece of paper in front of them and answer the question. And on the question, and the, uh, the participants aren't aware that their colleague next to them may be answering a different question. They all probably assume they have the same question, but they don't. The question for one-fifth of the people in the audience, or group A, was how fast were the cars going when they made contact with one another. Uh, group B were asked, who saw the same video, how fast were the cars going when they hit one another, etc., on through how fast were they going when they bumped into each other, collided, and how fast were the cars going when they smashed into each other? Group E was asked. The average estimate of speed for the same video viewed under the same circumstances was almost a 10 mile per hour difference. That is, when people were asked how fast the cars were going when they made contact, the average estimate of speed was about 31 miles an hour. When they were asked how fast the two cars were going when they smashed into one another, the average estimate of speed was almost 41 miles an hour. That's, that's the difference between liability and no liability, isn't it? In a verdict, I mean, the 10 mile an hour difference or a difference of that magnitude, a 33% difference in, in the answer, uh, it's huge. And it was based solely upon the question that was asked, not the evidence that was viewed, not the tape that was viewed. And furthermore, they went on, uh, and they said, okay, answer the second question. And for half of the group, they were asked, um, out of 100 as a subset, they were asked, did you see a broken headlight? Yes or no. And the other half were asked, did you see the broken headlight? Yes or no. Right? And how much more frequently did people see the broken headlight? When indeed there was no broken headlight when they were asked, did you see the broken headlight? About two to one. Okay? So the researchers were just stunned by their findings, and they thought, well, maybe this is just an artifact of, you know, videos and people have expectations of what happens when automobiles go together. So we'll, we'll change the paradigm a little bit, and this time they took a photograph, a still photograph of a basketball player, and they put the photograph up in front of the audience, and they said to half of the group, how tall is the basketball player? And for the other half of the group, they said, how short is the basketball player? The average estimate of height when the basketball player was uh, asked about his height was six feet, six inches tall. For those who were asked how short is the basketball player, the average estimate of height was five feet, eight inches tall or short. Okay? Same basketball player, same photo. Um, that's an identification that could be called into question, <laughs> a difference of that magnitude. Or how about they sent them into a movie? and took off all their watches, and then when they came out of the movie, they said, so how long was the movie you just saw? And half of the people reported that the movie was two hours and ten minutes long. And when they said how short was the movie, half of the people reported that the movie was one hour and forty minutes long, a thirty-minute differential. This is semantic persuasion. It is the, the message that we convey creates an image in people's minds, the words that we use. And so we want to be very conscientious of what we say in our opening statement, of course in our examination and throughout the trial. As plaintiff counsel, you want to be sure we're using words like smashed and crashed into one another. Uh, and as defense counsel, we want to be sure that we don't become victims of semantic contagion, and that is we start using the same language, but rather we're careful to use language that minimizes, because we minimize the image that's being created in the audience's mind.